the 51st day of the full-scale war of Russia against Ukraine. During this time, about 5 million people left Ukraine. Such figures were announced by the office of the UN High Commissioner for Refugees. Cities and villages near Kyiv continue to witness the consequences of atrocities committed by the Russian occupiers. As of April the 15th, more than 900 bodies of dead civilians had been discovered in the Kyiv region alone. Many of them are buried in mass graves. The town of Bucha, which is 20 kilometers from Kyiv, has the largest number of the dead. More than 350 bodies have already been discovered there. 95% застрелене саме зі снайперської або стрілецької зброї. Тобто ми розуміємо, що в період окупації людей просто розстрілило на вулицях. Also, the head of the national police in the Kyiv region said that the occupiers repeatedly violated agreements on green corridors. They shot up cars of civilians fleeing the war. Там був чоловік з дружиною, вона була попереду, ззаді знаходилась мати з двохрічним з двохрічною дитиною, точніше, був рік і сім місяців, маленька дитина, також підліток 14 років і їх бабуся. От вони рухались в колонії фактично із 15 автівок. На всіх цих автівках були відповідні надписи і ці білі ганчірки. Виїхав БМП і прямою наводкою розстріляв вказаний автомобіль. У жінки відірвала голову. Only the driver survived. He is in extremely serious condition now. Over the past 24 hours, April the 15th, the occupiers continued to shell civilians. The office of the general prosecutor of Ukraine reported casualties in Kharkiv. Russian soldiers fired Uragan multiple rocket launchers at the industrial district of Kharkiv. As a result of the shelling, 10 civilians were killed, including a seven-month-old child. Another 35 people were injured. These figures were published as of 22 o'clock on April the 15th. The regional center of Mykolaiv was also affected. As a result of the shelling, five people were killed and 15 others were injured. This was reported by Vitaly Kim, the head of the Mykolaiv Regional State Administration. According to him, the cause of the deaths was an unexploded shell that one of the victims had picked up. Earlier, Kim published the information that the occupiers fired a missile at Mykolaiv, and it hit a post office. At least three people were injured. The Russian military continued to appall with its atrocities. The security service of Ukraine released a recording of a conversation where the invader brags about his abuse of Ukrainian war prisoners. Such atrocities stunned even his fellow officers who asked where he, such a savage, had come from. However, the security service of Ukraine already has all the information about the Russian torturer. Це 27-річний астраханський недочоловік Салават Сарсенов. Він контрактником прийшов із війною на українську землю. Such behavior is a gross violation of the Geneva Convention and other international norms for the treatment of prisoners of war. So Ukraine will demand a fair trial of the Russian executioners. This is a young Ukrainian, Bogdan Unichenko. He is now three years old. However, the boy has experienced too much grief as of his age. Last year, the whole Ukraine learned about Bogdan. The two-year-old boy was lost in the woods. More than 300 people searched for him for almost a day and luckily they found him, four kilometers away from his home in the forest zone. However, this year fate has set new horrors for Bogdan. He spent a whole month in a village occupied by the Russians. Bogdan's family lives in the village of Ragovka. It is 30 kilometers away from the border with Belarus. Russians shelled the village every 20 minutes. Several times it hit their house as well, says the boy's father. The child was shaking with every explosion. For safety, they were sleeping in the basement with the neighbors. Bogdan Bye-bye, bye-bye, hovался, -bye, плакал. 
Two weeks ago, the village of Ragovka was liberated from the Russian occupiers. Now little Bohdan is safe. His family is slowly recovering from the experience. The hottest spot on the map of Ukraine is the port city of Mariupol. There, the occupiers have created a real hell on earth for those residents who stayed in the city. The Russians are deliberately turning Mariupol residents into targets for the Ukrainian military. The occupiers encourage Mariupol residents to wear a white ribbon, since this is the mark used by the Russian army and can be mistaken by our Ukrainian troops as the real enemy. Petro Andrushenko, advisor to the mayor of Mariupol. The occupiers also introduced a pass for moving around the city. This way they conduct a census of the population and mop up the unreliable ones in their opinion. Such a list includes state employees, police officers and pro-Ukrainian activists. But this is not all of the innovations. Now, in order to get food, locals have to earn it. This is how the Russians are forcing people to clean up the rubble in the city. The Russians are holding all of Mariupol hostage, and they are gradually turning it into a big labor camp. Mariupol City Council. Also, according to the Mariupol City Council, the occupiers forbid burying those whom they have killed. And the bodies of the dead that used to be buried right outside their homes by their relatives are being exhumated by the Russians now. The Ukrainian intelligence detected 13 Russian mobile crematoria in Mariupol. З місць масового захоронення у подвір'ях у братських могилах, розуміючи те, що там такі сліди їх злочинів працюють крематорії людей, де можуть вони палюють прямо на території міста або вивозять на непідконтрольну українській владі. The head of the Donetsk Regional Military Administration also added that for the third day people have not been let out of the city at all, even those who are trying to escape in their own vehicles. Although, even before, not everyone was able to do so because the city is being constantly shelled and there is no fuel for cars. The Russian invaders have already destroyed 95% of Mariupol. There is no electricity, water, heating, communications or food in the city. It is not known exactly how many people remain in the blockade. Where can you find a safe place if your city is under siege? Is it an unusual residential building? No. In hospitals or schools? Vitor Bolnitsa, Mariupol. Roddom. No. In a theater. The heart of your city. Far away from any military objects. Yes. That's a good idea. Is there any other way we could warn Russian pilots about kids hiding in the theater? Yes. Capital letters. In Russian. That way we will definitely be safe. But only if murdering our children isn't their goal.